Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich, and I'd like to talk to you about engineering and leadership. So the topic for this video is this question of, do we want our company to be like a machine? Now, there's no shortage of people who, even if they're not aware of it, the basic operating assumption they have is we're trying to turn our, our corporation, we want to turn our corporation into a machine. Uh, jumping ahead to the answer, the answer is no, we don't want to do that. Now, uh, that'll come as a surprise to a few people, and it kind of all boils down to this. If you look at the research, if you look at the empirical data, it's absolutely clear that in many cases you don't want to do it. So, okay, so what am I talking about? Well, this all goes back to some research conducted by guys named Burns and Stalker. And they, I think it was about 1961, and they talked about this idea of a, a, mecha, a mechanistic organization versus an organic organization. And the idea is we all, you know, organizations are are a kind of an abstract thing. We use metaphors to think about them. And the, you know, kind of as a result of the Industrial Revolution and kind of machines are the thing, people started thinking about companies as machines. And here's the, the, the problem really in a nutshell is this, is I don't know about you, but I don't like being a cog. I don't like being a cog in a big machine, a gear in a big clock. But um, what it comes down to is there are cases where the, the, the machine or, uh, approach works pretty well. Now, this video is about engineering. And the thing is, there aren't cases where it works well for engineering. You see, the thing is, um, when we talk about this mechanistic approach or this organic approach, uh, let me give you two clear examples. On the one hand, there's Walmart. Okay, Walmart competes on the basis of cost. Everything at Walmart is about uh, driving to efficiency. Um, they tend to think jobs are interchangeable. You know, if you can manage the children's clothing department, you're just as capable of managing the, the uh, automotive department. Um, you know, they think in terms of sort of scalar a chain of command. You know, you don't talk to that boss. You talk to your boss. He talks to his boss. He talks to her boss and so on. And you kind of work this command very much like, like the military. Um, there's other ideas like every job has to be very tightly prescribed. There needs to be a job description. If you're the kind of person that thinks every position needs a very precise job description, you are using the mechanistic metaphor. Um, other things about it, you know, it tends to be uh, very much, you know, the, the ultimate goal for a mechanistic organization is efficiency. Now, let's think about Apple Computer. That is absolutely the opposite of Walmart. Interestingly, both those organizations dominate their space. But see, in an organic organization, such as your Apples, your Googles, your so on, what you're doing is you're not in pursuit of efficiency as much as you are in pursuit of effectiveness. And effectiveness by, by which we mean the extent to which you have accomplished your objectives. Now, uh, in an organic organization, you get less worried about titles, you get less worried about job descriptions, and you get more worried about working together. Work gets done by people, and more work gets done when more people work together. Uh, in an organic organization, you have room for the idea of an expert. You know, no, you cannot take a mechanical engineer, normally, and say, okay, you go design the electric circuits. See, there's specialization. You have electrical engineering experts, you have software engineering experts, you have mechanical, and so on. Now, I get it that, you know, that's not strictly true. I mean, my degrees are, my bachelor's and my master's degree are mechanical engineering, and most people in my career have known me as a software engineer, and along the way I've done a bit of circuit design. So, I mean, I get it that there's, but, but even then, right, that gets back to this idea that things aren't tightly defined. So you, you do have experts, but because we're not working to a job description, you're saying, well, there's nobody who has that skill. I know. I'll go pick that skill up. And so you do have expertise. You do have this phenomena of experts. At the same time, 
you don't get locked into, well, I'm a mechanical guy, I do mechanical things. At any rate, so um, the long and the short of it is, you know, in an organization, um, uh, organic organization, anybody talks to anybody. You don't worry about chain of command. You don't worry about job descriptions. You know, you don't worry about the department. You just simply focus on everybody working together. Now, here's the thing. Michael Porter wrote an important uh, paper in the mid 80s, and um, some of you may know it as Porter's model. And what he what he showed was, or what he argued was, you know, there really are two ways to dominate a segment of industry. The one way is to buy is by competing on the basis of cost, hence your Walmarts. The other is by competing on the basis of features or or excellence or something like that, hence your Apple. I mean, notice Apple doesn't compete by producing the lowest uh, price thing. They compete by producing what is perceived as the best is is the is the best. Um, device and hence they don't have to try to reduce their price they can charge a premium because their device is perceived as superior what uh, uh, Michael Porter showed also or what a lot of papers Porter and, and kind of putting together his stuff and Burns and Stalker and a lot of other guys who looked at this guys and gals um, it, it, it comes down to this uh, important note uh, the mechanistic approach does not work when you're trying to compete, compete on the basis of feature set. And it's very simple why. Because in order to be the best in your industry, to have the superior technology and so on, you need very creative people. You need very capable people. You need experts. In newsflash, experts don't like being treated like cogs in, a, in the machine. Um, you know, we, we don't like being treated as a machine. So the, the, the big takeaway here is if you're planning on competing on the basis of features and excellence and all those things, you're trying to be, use Apple's model, you have to lose the, uh, the you know, the idea that the companies ought to be like a machine and instead embrace the idea um, that the companies ought to be more like it, like an organism. And uh, that's certainly, I know a lot of people were like, ah, you know, we have a lot of people where I work now, you know, we started out, I'm one of the original guys, we started out with this very much, we weren't using that terminology, but, but what amounts to is we were very organic in our approach, and then as we started hiring people, as we got bigger, you know, all of a sudden everybody's trying to make a machine out of it, and they really don't like it. But the, but the, the empirical evidence, the research, the data shows <laughs> that if you're taking your high technology company and trying to make it into a machine, you are killing your company and positioning it where it can no longer compete on the basis of excellence and feature set and, and all these sort of industry leading things. So you may think it's a great idea to make a machine, but make no mistake about it, you're killing your company. At any rate, uh, enough on that for now. I'm Dr. Tom Ulrich, and I like to talk about engineering and leadership. We'll talk to you next time.